everyone welcome back to another session in dentistry ammo so we are dealing with some pharmacology sessions so today's topic is drug antagonism so antagonism is something acting against the drug so if we have a drug a and it has an effect on a molecule that is normal effect but in presence of another drug okay in presence of another drug this will not be normal under the normal state okay so if it is going and reaching the concentration in presence of drug a in presence of this antagonist okay what happens is this will not reach the maximum concentration or it reaches only if there is presence of a in excess amount okay so that we will deal later so this is nothing but a drug which inhibits or reduces the action of a another drug so that is what we are studying today that is the antagonism antagonism is nothing but a molecule which is acting against the drug okay so it's a very commonly asked short note the drug antagonism and it's very important to understand the mechanism so which all drugs not to be given along with another drug so it is not just important for your academic point of view but also for a clinical point of view so what are the types of antagonism so they are broadly classified as physical antagonism chemical antagonism physiological or functional antagonism and pharmacological antagonism so these are the various mechanisms so various mechanisms which interrupts the first drug so a is our drug and b is our antagonist so various mechanisms where the drug b interferes with the action of the drug a okay so in physical antagonism this nothing but it is based on the physical property physical property of a drug such as the charcoal which adsorb the alkaloid okay charcoal in case of alkaloid poisoning alkaloid poison so that is just the physical property so this charcoal acts as a antagonist and it reduces the availability of this alkaloid so it is actually beneficial sometimes it can be used as a antidote if some in poisoning cases this charcoal will adsorb the alkaloid and reduce the availability of alkaloid and saves the patient so physical antagonism is beneficial in charcoal and alkaloid poison combination where the charcoal is our antagonist which is reducing the availability of alkaloid in the body okay so that is a physical antagonism now we have the chemical antagonism okay this is this is a different mechanism where a drug counters the effect of another by simple chemical reaction so there is chemical reaction happening okay or neutralization is happening neutralization or chemical reaction okay so this is not like binding to the receptor or such mechanism okay so what happens is when calcium sodium adipate form insoluble complexes with arsenic or lead okay so calcium sodium adipate which forms insoluble complex with arsenic or lead so here what happens is there is chemical composition chemical formation or chemical action is happening here it is just a physical adsorption happens and reduce availability okay so here there is mechanism of chemical action okay so this both combines and reduce the availability okay reduce the availability of one drug by the mechanism of chemical action okay so this is different this is different that is known as neutralization next we have the functional antagonism or physiological antagonism this is very simple one just like we know the pancreas has alpha cells and beta cells which produces uh, glucagon and insulin but in case of uh, drugs two drugs 
which has got opposite effect okay i just said the pancreas example to understand this we have glucagon which increases the glucose level in body whereas insulin which decreases the glucose level this is opposing action and it maintains the blood glucose level in our body so this is the functional antagonism or physiological antagonism in body we have many types of functional antagonism so the common example is a glucagon and insulin which maintains the blood glucose or blood sugar level okay now we have the most important one that is a pharmacological antagonism the pharmacological antagonism the mechanism we need to understand before going into detail that is the common mechanism we have a receptor molecule here okay so this is our receptor molecule sorry so this receptor molecule has a binding site okay so this is our binding site receptor binding site so this is a receptor where well, usually what happens is our agonist molecule will come and attach here and brings out the action okay so the response will be happening but what happens is in presence of an antagonist if we have an antagonist sometimes instead of agonist there will be antagonist here so what happens is there will not be any action taking place because it will not take place any conformational changes so this receptor will not be active it will be in a passive state there is no change happening so there is no action so this is what commonly happening so this is a basic mechanism we have a receptor molecules in and everywhere in the tissue so there is a receptor binding site where the agonist will bind that is our drug molecule will bind and make out the changes by conformational changes and there will be action happening that is a drug will be dissolution drug dissolution happens and it brings out changes but in case if there is antagonist present it will bind to the receptor site instead of agonist okay so this is antagonist instead of agonist which might be uh, a competitive uh, antagonism or non competitive antagonism that is what we are going to learn now so this is mechanism you need to understand so pharmacological we have two classification the first one is competitive and the next one is competitive and the next one is non competitive so this is very easy by if you know this mechanism because this competition is happening so what competition the competition to bind to the receptor site okay there is a competition between the agonist and antagonist in competitive antagonism okay so competitive again we can classify into as reversible or irreversible so the mechanism is same so antagonist and the agonist compete to bind to the site okay and sometimes this antagonist will win the situation and bind to this site and that is known as competitive antagonism okay so there is a fight happening between the agonist and antagonist there is a competition happening so this will bind to the site and there will not be any action taking place okay so that is competitive antagonism so in case of reversible the binding will be taking place by a weak bond a weak bond is happening but the thing is if we have more and more agonist more and more agonist molecule if we increase the concentration that is the law of mass action so if we have more and more amount of agonist molecule what happens is eventually this will be reversed that is the action will be taking place because more and more agonist molecule we have it will replace the antagonist and the action will be taking place because there is a weak bond attached here so it can be easily replaceable okay so this is basically a concentration 
dependent more concentration this antagonist will be replaced from this side by the agonist and the action will take place okay but this graph can be represented like this the normal agonist alone without any changes agonist will be like this and the effect on sorry dosage on the x axis and the effect on the y axis this is just uh, with the agonist without any antagonist we need this much of dosage but what happens is when there is antagonist this is antagonist okay when there is antagonism we need to increase the dosage okay increase the dosage to get the desired response okay so we need to increase the dosage so the dosage will be increased so this is on x axis this is the dosage okay so without antagonist we need only this much dosage okay but in presence of antagonist we need this much dosage because on the x axis we have dosage to get the effect because on the y axis we have effect okay so to get the effect we need to increase the dosage this is competitive antagonism okay so the most common example for competitive uh, antagonism is atropine and acetylcholine which compete for the mascarinic r receptor okay so that is a very common example or the naloxone which is an antidote and morphine compete for the opioid r receptor okay so this is competitive reversible antagonism so what happens to this competitive irreversible antagonist the only change happens is the bond happening here okay so rest everything is same the bond the bond strength will be different the same mechanism the antagonist is here so antagonist is attached here again it is a competition but the bond is very strong the covalent bond okay covalent bond which is very difficult to replace so in this case that is in irreversible antagonism if we increase our agonist concentration nothing will happen because this is not a weak bond like competitive antagonism this is very strong covalent bond so this cannot be broken and this will not get into this place by removing it like competitive antagonism so this is irreversible competitive antagonism so this this graph will not be like this okay so there will not be any change if it is a agonist alone and if there is antagonist here so this is our concentration if this is antagonist so ultimately if we add more and more agonist there is no point it will not reach to the effect because this is not moving out of the receptor site that is irreversible competitive antagonism so whereas the non competitive one okay non competitive mechanism is different because there is no competition we have the receptor here and we have the agonist and we have the antagonist here but there is no competition is happening what happens is this antagonist binds to an allosteric allosteric site allosteric site site which is not an active site this is the active site here is a molecule usually binds but in non competitive there is no competition between the agonist and the antagonist instead what happens is this antagonist binds to a allosteric site allosteric site allosteric site is a site on the molecule which is not a active site 
okay so once it binds to the site what happens is this process will deactivate okay so once it binds to this molecule this will be deactivated so once it is deactivated there will not be any action taking place so the antagonism happened so the common example is the common example is the flumazenil flumazenil and the benzodiazepine it's a common example where the flumazenil uh, by binding to this benzodiazepine site which antagonizes the effect of benzodiazepine by preventing the binding of gaba okay gaba to the gaba receptors so there will not be binding of this gaba to the gaba a receptors so this is a non competitive antagonism so this comes under our pharmacological mechanism before that we learned the functional antagonism chemical antagonism and physical antagonism so that is all about the drug antagonism uh, it's a simple one only thing the last part is little trickier that is our pharmacological we need to understand the concept of agonist and antagonist with respect to the receptor site okay so in competitive and non competitive the agonist and antagonist fight or not fight to get into this active site okay in competitive there is competition and non competitive there is no competition instead the antagonist sites to the allosteric site and neutralizes the molecule hope you understood this concept in pharmacology it is all about the concept and uh, knowing the very core of the concept then you can easily explain it rather than uh, by hearting the topic okay so i'll come up with more topics in pharmacology thank you